Welcome to the first ever Sibulan Masters Home Fest titled Embrace Home. This is an online sales event that showcases economic, need market, and high-end TLI dream homes you can embrace at comfortable payment terms and with exclusive perks. This online event will run from January 15 to February 15. Visit us at www.homefest-sibulanmasters.com for more information. Sibulan Masters wants to make your home fest online experience more exciting and extraordinary. So we prepared a series of lifestyle talks with no less than Cebu's homegrown designers as our special speakers. The first lifestyle talk is titled Maximini, and our guest speaker is Hil Zaire Buch Karungay, a creative entrepreneur, design advocate, and community crusader who is passionate about the past abilities in optimizing the intrinsic talent of his hometown, Cebu. Butch is the Chief Creative Officer of Zai Design Hive, the latest incarnation of the country's pioneering fashion jewelry exporter, which has since expanded to other creative disciplines. He is also the Chief Reinvention Officer of District 32 at Mactan Cebu, the leading operator of commercial concessions at the Mactan Cebu International Airport. In addition to his business interest, he is also a commissioner of the Cebu City Tourism Commission and the focal point of Cebu's UNESCO City of Design destination. In 2020, he was a national consultant for the United Nations Department of Social and Economic Affairs and chaired both the Affiliate Events Committee and the Blue Mango Awards for Cebu Design Week 2020. A recipient of multiple international design awards, particularly in Paris and also in the Manila Fame Show in the Philippines, Butch also won the gold prize in the first Asian fashion jewelry design competition. He was also named the Young Entrepreneur in 2007 by the Cebu Chamber of Commerce and Industry. A graduate of the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania with a degree in marketing and finance, he worked in strategic planning at McCann Erickson and corporate strategy at American Express, both in New York, before returning to the Philippines in 2000. Ladies and gentlemen, the speaker of our lifestyle talk, Maximini, who will show us how to maximize small spaces, please welcome Butch Karungay. Hey guys, good afternoon from Cebu in the Philippines. My name is Butch and I appreciate you tuning in as we kick off HomeFest 2021. Brought to you by Cebu Landmasters Inc., the leading property developer in the Visayas and Mindanao. Thank you CLI for this opportunity and for your support during the last Cebu Design Week 2020. Today, I will be talking to you guys about um, Maxi Mini design solutions for tiny spaces. As we all know, the pandemic has forced many of us to spend more time at home, which, which have become our personal omniverse, where we live, work, and play. However, as urbanization has intensified, many people, particularly young professionals, have been forced to live in small spaces. We're fitting everything in that you need in a few square meters can be a challenge. This becomes a harder task when we want these personal havens to be Instagram worthy, showcasing unique living experiences that's personal to us in a tight setting that is friendly on the budget. But that's what makes small space design so interesting because it really tests your creativity, your taste, and your resourcefulness. Before we go on, let me just say that I am neither an architect nor I am, am I an interior designer. However, I've dabbled extensively with spatial design for the last 20 years. Our original business is in fashion jewelry, which meant that we had to exhibit in trade shows all around the world from Paris to Hong Kong, New York to Tokyo and Manila. Exhibition stands are perhaps the most challenging small spaces to design since you have to create beautiful settings that are easy to build up and break down. They're also commercial and functional. 
in 2013, we got the master concession for all the non-aviation commercial spaces in the Mactan Airport, where we had to renovate within three months while still operating 24-7. We also had to rezone the very limited areas and optimize them for very heavy passenger traffic so we could meet the even heavier rents per month. For the last three years, I've also been working on my house in Mary Luisa, which has become a never-ending project as my needs and preferences continuously change, especially now that I'm spending so much more time in it. So while my personal projects are not exactly small spaces, I did live in a nano space a million years ago during my freshman year in college um, in the States. I shared a nine square meter room with a roommate. Um, those horrific eight months taught me a lot in terms of space utilization, which continue to influence me to this day. So despite not having any formal training in this, I have learned that no matter what space you're designing, the basic principles of form, function, flow, and flexibility are consistent. I've been an advocate of the Japanese concept of ikigai for quite some time now, which has at its core premise, the recipe for leading a more balanced and more meaningful life. While in lockdown, I decided to apply the tenets of ikigai to interior design and was surprised at how they lend perfectly to how I wanted to live. By taking form, which is aesthetics, function or practicality, flow, which is utilization, and flexibility or adaptability, then you get a perfect confluence of design elements that include what you love, what your home needs, what works with what you currently have, and lastly and more importantly, in times of crisis, what you can afford. So whether you live in a studio apartment or want to get more out of a tiny room, I have a few small space design ideas and hacks that will make them feel much larger and practical while showcasing your personal style. Today's discussion will be divided into three parts, starting with the basics, such as the floor plan, fit outs, which is like lighting or space utilization. Then finally, we end with furnishings, which has um, encompasses furniture and decor. Floor plans are really the essence of the property, the spaces, how they interact, the outlooks and flow. The single most important aspect of a floor plan is its accurate scale. If it is an open plan like most studios, then the first order of business is to define the spaces and determine the functions. I suggest you really spend time in the space to get a better feel of it and how you want to use it. Things to consider are natural light, ceiling heights, what floor you're on, and outside views. Again, scale and accuracy is important especially if you have existing pieces that you want to incorporate into the floor plan. Next, you need to determine what kind of style you want. I couldn't find data on um, Filipino style preference, but I wouldn't imagine it wouldn't be that far off from the U.S., which is represented here on the top left. Traditional and contemporary styles are the two most popular, but have also included modern, eclectic, and tropical on this slide, as I've been seeing lots of those in the local scene recently. The important thing is you have to decide which direction you want to go towards, which can be really determined by your personal preferences, style, budget, and your existing pieces. Once you've determined your floor plan, uh, the next order of, of business is to define your different zones that you've identified. In small spaces, it is best not to have solid partitions and use see-through dividers instead. This allows for a better flow and circulation while making the space look larger. Here on the left, you see a doorless glass partition, while on the right, they've utilized a suspended painting in front of some curtains that can be drawn for more privacy. Other options include planters, creative dividers, and beaded curtains. In interior design, color is one of the best tools to set the mood. All colors change their character 
when lights when lightness and saturation are modified just not enough to pick a color for a certain element because you also need to pick a shade lighter colors are airy and as a general rule they make rooms feel larger and brighter dark colors are sophisticated and warm and they make feel rooms feel more intimate the colors you use in your interior design and decor have an impact on the atmosphere you create, and you need to correctly assess what this ambiance should be before you choose the colors. The colors you pick should either coordinate or contrast, so decide whether you want the decor to be harmonious and relaxing or interesting and dynamic. Like with most things, in the end, it really is about personal preference. Next. Space is always at a premium when it comes to small units. Hence, it is important to maximize every surface, from your window sills to the shelves to the corners. A lot of times, vertical space gets overlooked, so you need to come up with creative solutions on how to utilize every square inch of your unit. Next, take advantage of natural light because the interplay of natural lights in interior spaces creates mood, enhances materials, energizes a place, and is a natural disinfectant. Indoor places with beautiful plays of light create an alluring ambiance and ensues a lively feeling to its occupants. This correlation of positivity and natural light is even more important in small spaces which may not have that much access to the sun's rays. So it's important that you lay out your unit with this in mind, and do not block any of the natural light from coming in. In my house, I actually don't have any window treatments, and my bedroom faces east, so wake up every day with the sun. At night, when you obviously don't have any natural light, creating moods is more important than ever, but you also take into account that there are different kinds of light sources. First, you need ceiling lighting which is both direct, like a chandelier or pin lights, or indirect in the form of cove lighting, which I think is a must these days. The second kind of lights are those for, for functional illumination, such as when you need them for reading. Lastly, you need accent lights to emphasize key pieces to contribute to the dramatic effect. The important thing to understand is that you need illumination from the ceilings to the walls and the tables, so the light is dispersed properly without having to travel so far. The next hack is the use of mirrors, which come in an almost unlimited variety of shapes and sizes, and aren't just designed to add a decorative touch to an interior. They're also the perfect solution for making a space feel brighter and larger. Some activities that we do every day, such as getting dressed and brushing our teeth, would have an uncertain outcome when performed without the help of reflecting, re reflecting surfaces. Therefore, mirrors increase the functionality of the room, especially when it comes to the design of bathrooms, bedrooms, living rooms, entryways, and lobbies. When placed strategically, they can also bring the outdoors in, thereby contributing to the overall well-being of a unit. Now that we're done with the basics and the fit-out phase, let's bounce over to what is probably the most fun part of this exercise. Let's talk furnishings. A fairly new trend that has sprouted in recent years is convertible furniture. So coffee tables that transform into work desks, sofas that double as bunk beds, and dining tables that can expand, to name a few. The merits of such pieces are obvious in small spaces, but there are still not that many of these multi-purpose furniture in the Philippines. However, if you are crafty or know people who are, then there are many open source DIY plans on the net that you can download. Another idea to maximize space are wall-mounted desks that either fold up when not in use or are integrated with vertical storage shelves. As many of us are working from home for the last 10 months and the foreseeable future, this is a design hack that is very useful. However, like the convertible furniture in the previous slide, not many of these wall-mounted worst desks are available in the Philippines. They are 
reliant on they are less reliant on precision mechanisms though so they are much easier to manufacture using conventional techniques and fixtures uh, next um, filling up a small room with larger scale furniture may seem counterintuitive however when you use less but larger simple pieces then you're able to define areas better and make them more cozy and inviting Pick pieces that can double duty, such as an ottoman that you can use as a coffee table or a sofa bed that you can pull out for guests so you can maximize the space and justify the larger scales. Since I'm a big advocate of upcycling, which is taking ordinary, used, and or older items and repurposing them into functional furniture, storage, and decor, then upcycling is definitely recommended. Not only are they great for the environment, but it's also a perfect way to add personal flair to your humble yet stylish abode. On the left here, we have a wooden spool table that's made from electrical or cable wires, um, spools. Uh, in the middle, there's a wooden pellet headboard. And on the right, there are storage crates that also double as benches. The only limit to what you can upcycle is really your imagination. So go crazy with it. In studio units, perhaps it is only the toilet that is the only enclosed space with a door. Most people tend to neglect their bathrooms when in fact they should focus considerable energy into making them truly spectacular. Being isolated from the rest of the studio, it's easier to go crazy in these spaces as you don't have to look at them all the time. In interior design, the integration of nature is invaluable. As plants not only add beauty and color to a space, they actually play a vital role in our physiological and psychological well-being. Many people are also growing their own herbs to ensure their food traceability and sustainability. By going vertical with your indoor plants, you not only heighten their aesthetic and functional value, you also save much needed space. Advances in hydroponic technology have also made it easier to cultivate plants indoors, so those without green thumbs can actually decorate with these essential features. Next, Filipino pride has definitely exploded in the last few years, with many more cultural advocates sprouting everywhere. This is definitely a wonderful phenomenon and can be integrated into many modern design styles. Here we have a hand-carved 19th century angel from a Bohol church on the left, many different types of baskets for storage, an ifugao bulul or fertility deity figurine, and an e an ethnic statement necklace mounted as home decor on the extreme right. In small spaces, though, you do not want to go overboard on ethnic pieces, unless you want your studio to look like a stall in Freedom Park. I suggest to keep it to one or two pieces that are strategically placed to blend in with your decor. Since I've talked about clutter uh, in the last slide, let me re-emphasize that too much stuff is the single biggest enemy of any small space. It's important to continuously edit yourself and your belongings and remove what you do not use or intend to use in the near future. Hence, the first word on this slide is cull. So if you don't need something, store them off premises, sell them, donate them, or give them away. Next um, is to categorize. So keep things by use and always keep them at the same place so you can intuitively, intuitively find them all the time. Lastly, is to contain them properly so you don't make a mess and you maximize your small space. In this slide, you have a wonderfully organized closet on the top left, a kitchen drawer to charge your electronics out of sight on the top right, a pantry that would make Martha Stewart proud at the bottom left, and a hack for those with lots of t-shirts and jeans on the bottom right. While we're on the subject of home organizers, um, 
bins and containers, uh, I would like to share with you my favorite local resources of where to find them. Mandawi Foam has affordable furniture that have steadily improved in style, durability, and pricing. HMR in Reclamation gets a new container from abroad every week that's filled with not quite brand new home furnishings and gadgets, but at great values. Facebook Marketplace has tons of locally made baskets, furniture, and decor using indigenous materials. True Value has slightly higher priced items, but is a great selection of things you never thought you needed, but can't actually live without once you have them. When I can't find them locally, I go to Lazada and Shopee, of course, uh, when I'm also feeling lazy. <laughs> And Daiso remains above and beyond my favorite store for home essentials and hats. Let me end this talk by going back to the four Fs and their importance in achieving a truly harmonious home that is a pleasure to live, work, and play in. I hope um, that was helpful for all of you. Um, good luck and as you embark on your maxi mini journey, stay safe, stay productive, and stay creative, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much, Butch, for that stimulating and insightful talk. You gave us a lot of ideas on the right design that can make us maximize small spaces. And to our attendees, thank you for being with us and for watching the first session of the Cebu Landmasters Home Task Lifestyle Talks titled Maxi Mini. Hope to see you on our next session. Have a great day and stay safe, everyone. Oh, 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 oh.